I've been sitting here staring into the void for three hours trying to figure out how to start this video. Normally when I do these discussions, I begin with some related topic, tangential or otherwise, and slowly segue into whatever I'm going to be attempting to weasel dick jokes into for the day. And when it focuses on a killer in specific, I attempt to cover maybe how I feel about the killer or how the community feels about the killer, but that's just it, isn't it? How does the community feel about the twins? Realistically speaking, most of you forgot the twins existed before you saw the thumbnail. Don't lie to me, when I was playing this killer offline for research this past week, most people didn't even know Victor stops you from leaving the gates or that Victor gives off killer instinct. And quite a few people didn't know killer instinct goes through lockers, but that's another video for another day. The point is, is this is the least picked killer in the game, and anyone who mains the twins does so in the same way people main the hillbilly, through a lot of tears, frustration, heavy masturbation to fill the dark void left from the fact that their fave is problematic, and in the twins' case, probably by submitting another 7 to 15 bug reports to behavior in the hopes that they will one day be able to untie the tangled mess of code to create a coherent and working killer out of whatever mess has been created from a recent update. But for me, the Twins is the most interesting killer conceptually. A killer that can exist in two forms, the sum of the parts of one whole killer, but can be separated and put in different areas of the map to create a new and interesting dynamic. At the end of the day, I put this power right up there with the Trapper and Knight. Killers who have heavy potential in their powers, but the potential feels wasted, and what we are left with are bland one-note killers knowing for doing one thing and one thing only. Knight for being the most boring anti-loop, Twins for slugging, and the Trapper for crying and contemplating jumping off a bridge to end his miserable existence as another three-man out happens to the chorus of ten traps being disarmed armed and the clicking of flashlights in the exit gate. The twins' power is Victor. Okay, they call it Blood Bond, and the power description in game makes it far more complicated than it actually is. When the twins are conjoined, press the power button to separate them. You then control Victor, a tiny, fast little gremlin that has no terror radius and makes a small growling sound. While controlling Victor, you cannot see the auras of anything except for generators or scratch marks for some reason. Victor cannot damage gins, break pallets or walls, vault windows, carry or hook survivors. Victor can, however, lock lockers temporarily when a survivor is in them, charge and pounce on survivors, leaving them broken and incapacitated until he is removed and be a general little pain in the ass. Not to the survivors, but to you when his hitbox bugs out again and he bangs off the air molecules around some random bush on the Garden of Jagovs or phases right through a survivor standing still and playing on their Game Boy. When you pounce on a survivor or lock a survivor in a locker, you automatically switch back to Charlotte. While controlling Charlotte, you are a bare bones M1 killer. You can do all the breaking stuff, carry, and basic attack. At any time while Victor is out and not attached to a survivor, you can switch between the two killers using the active ability button. The swapping animation is really clunky and lasts just long enough to make swapping feel sticky and unintuitive. The wiki says that the animation lasts 0.25 seconds when going from Charlotte to Victor, but a whopping three seconds from Victor to Charlotte, which is fucking ass. And the two different speeds cause you to feel sluggish and uncoordinated. The biggest issue with the twins is how they feel over everything. Truth is, I actually don't have a terribly big issue with the power in and of itself. I think it's fine for the most part, barring a few hit bugs and bugs issues, but the feeling of the power is really what gets me. A few mid-chapter patches ago, there was a shadow buff to the twins, making the 0.25 swap time the same for both, and it felt amazing to play. You actually felt like you were swapping between the two killers and not like you were some sort of puppet master attempting to get his shit together while in front of a live audience. And that needs to be pushed alive. The devs called it a bug, but it needs to be made a feature. A faster swapping time is necessary, especially when you take into account the fact that you can't swap when you're too close to certain objectives like the exit gates or a down survivor or a hooked survivor, which is... I understand it, it's to prevent camping, but sometimes it really feels weird. Like, for example, if you down a survivor with Victor, you can't instantly swap back to Charlotte. I feel like you should be able to. Oh, but I don't want to be able to camp the down survivor. You have to back up with Victor, right? You have to, like, back up to a stupid amount of distance and then switch, and then you get Killer Instinct. So what do you mean camp with Charlotte? If I see a, a second Killer Instinct, I can just swap back to Victor and then be right there. I see no issue with just allowing Victor to 
swap uh, with just allowing you to swap back to Charlotte ne right next to a down survivor. The exit gates I understand because they don't want you to be able to body block exit gates, which I still don't fully understand because you can't body block the exit gates with Victor. I guess they don't want you to body block the exit gates with Charlotte, which is understandable. But when it comes to Victor, you can't body block with Victor because then you'll just kick. Um, but the, the range around it with Victor that you can do the swapping is like three meters or four meters or something. You don't have to go very far. You can still park Victor in that little corner right next to the exit gates and still get the, the killer's instinct that you need. But I digress. I will say that a big change that I think needs to be made to though is Victor's hitbox. It needs soothing over and probably a bit of a modification when it comes to environments. I'd also like to make jumping over pallets and windows a tad more reliable instead of the janky mess that they are. I do have one major gripe with the power though. You cannot recall Victor to Charlotte, like ever. Look, I don't care if it's something as simple as having a cooldown, like whenever someone first crushes him, there's a little like six second cooldown before you can use him again. But the fact that you can pounce on someone and they can go hide with Victor, locking you out of your power for something like 60 seconds is ridiculous. Here's my solution. Holding the active ability button while Victor is out will cause him to crush himself and regrow inside Charlotte after six seconds. Any survivor who is being tracked with Killer Instinct when he crushes himself has Killer Instinct for an additional 1.5 seconds. Any survivor Victor is attached to when he crushes himself remains broken for an extra 30 seconds. And make the crushing himself timer be like 10 seconds before you can do it, so you can't leap on a survivor and then instantly crush Victor. Give them time to crush him themselves, but have a risk to kidnapping him, you know what I mean? So a quick update that happened while writing this script. I was reading the wiki and I noticed an entry that says you have the option to recall Victor after 30 seconds. And I did some testing and either I'm blind or this feature feature is bugged or the wiki is lying or whatever the case may be because I did not see an option to do this. I tried it multiple times on bots and even got a Twitch streamer I went against to hold Victor hostage for me and it did not happen. I tried everything. As a quick aside, I did find out that if you leave Victor idle randomly, the bots will stop everything they are doing to run across the map to kick Victor. I'm not even kidding. The coding on them lets them detect Victor is dormant from across the map and they will run into his range to kick him. It's absolutely hilarious. I posted on Twitter about this phenomenon and Volpixia responded saying she can confirm the feature exists. So at the end of the day, I genuinely have no idea what's going on, but here's the thing. Even if this 30 seconds on someone's back recall feature is in the game and I'm just a crazy person, I still feel like my solution is better. It gives you more ways to use Victor, has a risk to holding him hostage, and the recall function in my version would be available at any given time, not just when he's demanding piggyback rides. Also, I spent like two and a half hours coming up with that change, and I'll inhale clowns purple kush clouds before I toss away hours of work and brainstorming. Now let's talk about the twins add-ons, because there's not a lot that needs to be changed, but there is three in specific. The ceremonial candelabrum increases the crushing time of an idle victor by 0.2 seconds. Why? <laughs> I don't understand why this is a thing. It's kind of like that green tongue add-on for Nemesis, where whenever you hit infect somebody, they're they're hindered for 0.2 seconds. Like, who the fuck cares? Speaking of hindered, the candle album should instead hinder a survivor by 5% for three seconds when they kick an idle victor. Cat's eye, fully charging and holding pounce silences victor. Wow, I'll totally use that sometime next never. Instead, fully charging the pounce and holding it activates Killer Instinct for Victor when the survivor is within 5 meters of him. Finally, the Iridescent Pendant. If a survivor crushes an idle Victor, they are exposed for 45 seconds. I think it should be changed that Victor can now leap from survivor to survivor. You can no longer wake when pouncing on a survivor automatically, but at any time, you can press the ability button to switch back. But that's the video for today, guys. Let me know what you think down below. Don't forget to sub to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, a special thank you to my channel members, The Cannibal Main, Alex Balix, Ryan Jester, Tabasco Raccoon, Spirit Upgrades, and Nuclear Bomb for their additional support. If you want to know more about becoming a channel member, click that join button down below. I love you all, and I will see you tomorrow.